Um, hi, okay, so this is basically just an advertisement for a feature added to SBCL um, around October or so. Do people in this room use SBCL? People know what it is? Okay, great. <laughs> now I don't have to explain what it is. Um, okay, yeah, but the, this lightning talk is just basically about using Lisp from other languages. Um, I don't know if you guys ever found the need to use Lisp from, I don't know, C, Python, whatever other thing, but um, this is kind of the use case that ECL is for. Um, anyway, people who have tried to use it and like tried to have like an, a library written in SPCL and then they want to call it from Python or C or whatever because they have libraries in Python or C, um, they've had to do crazy things like RPC or pipes or maybe even transpilation, which is not good because um, transpilation is sort of like a one-time thing. Like once you write your code, you transpile it. You don't really go back and modify the original code. Um, it's, I mean, otherwise it's, you're just duplicating a lot of work. Um, so I'm just gonna give a quick example of what that looks like. So imagine you have your like application. This is like a, almost like a calculator application. You know, you have expressions. You can parse strings into expressions. You can simplify them. You can make the expressions into strings. This is a perfectly normal common list program. Doesn't have anything special. It's just a good example. Um, uses, you know, uh, C loss, objects, any list code you want. And then you want to call it from Python or C because you have some application in C or Python and you just want to use this library. Um, you don't want to rewrite your entire program written in something else into Lisp just to use this library. So um, this new feature allows you to do something like you can include a header file with all those functions exposed. You can initialize the Lisp runtime with your core file that has your Lisp code in it. And then you can basically just call the functions like the regular C function. So you can use the parse function we had on the other slide. Um, uh, and then the error, you know, you can, you can declare an error convention so that, you know, if it errors out, it's going to just do that in the return code and your return values are just these out pointers. So you write it into this expression pointer that you pass in, very idiomatic C code. And you can simplify it, you can print it out. Um, and then for uh, sort of a complicated thing is if you have Lisp objects, how do you actually do memory management? Because Lisp is a managed, uh, has garbage collection, it's a managed memory um, system. And C, you know, you have free and malloc. Well, you just call this thing called uh, Lisp, you know, Lisp, uh, Lisp handle release. Um, that's misspelled there. It should have release at the end of the, the bottom too. Um, that's a typo. Anyway, once you release that, it's basically like using malloc and free and C. You just said, okay, the C is done with this memory. I'm going to release it, and then the Lisp garbage collector takes care of it. So it's very seamless. And um, yeah, the point is, um, you've created these shared libraries. Um, you can call into them like regular C code. That means that any language, programming language, that has a foreign function interface into C, for example, Python, Julia, any language you can think of that can call C functions by loading in a shared library can use your Lisp code because you've exposed it this way. Um, so it's just, you know, these are the things that people normally worry about, like how, how, what do you do with pointers? What do you do with memory? What do you do with objects, with the GC? Don't worry about it, it's handled fine. Um, you can control the signal handling because SBCL naturally wants some signals. Um, so you can kind of selectively turn them on and off um, because it's a shared library so it's running in the same process. So you share all the signals. So you do need to think about what your process needs, who you give certain signals to. Um, you can even expose the loader and the debugger so you can load in more new Lisp code at runtime from your C program or from Python. Um, if you need it, uh, just load in a fazl. it's okay. Um, and even if you are worried about, okay, I'm writing this code to use my super cool Lisp library and then there's like an error and I have no idea what's happened, you can actually go in and say, I'm just gonna turn on the debugger in SBCL and then when there's an error on the Lisp code, just drop into the debugger for me. So you can kind of, you have some knobs you can turn to try and control that. So yeah, um, how you can get it, it's documented in this section that I added. Um, it's, it's recent, so if you have an old copy of the manual, it won't be there. But it's, it's that section calling Lisp from C. That's sort of the low level support that SBCL exposes to you. 
Um, so um, I kind of wrote this library called SPCL Librarian. That's sort of a bindings generator. So if you've ever used like CFFI, you know that you're gonna have to like write a lot of bindings yourself or whatever, and you have like different types of grovelers to write those for you. So this, this, this library, that, this is not part of SPCL, the one on the bottom. You can actually use that to specify the functions you wanna expose from Lisp. And then it will generate all those bindings for you. So it'll generate a C header file. Uh, it even can generate a Python bindings um, file. So um, you can just use these functions straight away from something like Python. And then you, know, you can add more languages, et cetera. Um, this also has the functionality to expose debuggers and the more opinionated parts that shouldn't belong in SBCL. For example, um, how exactly you want to expose the, deb the debugger, the loader, all these things. So yeah, this is kind of a work in progress. Um, it's already being used in production um, for scientific applications because you know the lingua franca for science right now is Python, um, but you want to write some super cool Lisp compiler and you want scientists to use it, you're gonna have to use something like this. Um, and in the past, you know, things like RPC or pipes have been used and it's just kind of clunky. You have to like get networking set up but you really just want some way to have a form, like a really standard form function interface. So that's what this, this is kind of the gap that this fills. ECL kind of does this, but um, you know, if you don't want to use ECL, now you have another option. And I think the commercial lists can do some of this too. Um, but I actually haven't used the, I haven't actually tried the commercial list functionalities because I've never really tried that, but apparently that also works with commercial lists. So this is similar to the functionality that's provided in some other list implementations. But now it's an SBC and you can use it. So that's it. <laughs> Should I take questions or? Uh, sure, any questions? Sure, yeah, <laughs> great. We'll see you